The southwest of England is a region of contrasts, where the powerful elements of land, sea, waves and wind come together to create breathtaking, beautiful landscapes. From the rolling hills of Devon and Somerset to the craggy coastline of Cornwall, this region boasts some of the most stunning scenery in the UK. Offshore to the west lies the Celtic Sea, our part of the Atlantic Ocean. Driven by offshore weather systems that sweep in, bringing both rain and sunshine, our rugged peninsula forces its presence on the sea, creating powerful winds and waves. Onshore and offshore, natural resources have always intertwined with the southwest and its coastal communities, with traditional industries like fishing and mining flourishing. But now this region's on the cusp of a fresh frontier. A new decarbonised future that will harness the power of nature through floating offshore wind farms. And it's the sheer scale of the prospect that takes your breath away. I mean, the plans are to generate enough energy to power all of the homes in the southwest and a bit more beyond. And that, that's just the start, that's phase one. And that means huge opportunities for the region. Here we are in the Coast Laboratory at the University of Plymouth. And I think for floating offshore wind, we're seeing a lot of new designs and developments coming forward, lots of innovations, both in the floating structure itself and also the mooring and anchoring system that goes with it. Yeah, so mooring and anchoring is one of the key differences between the fixed offshore wind and floating offshore wind. So it not only keeps the platform in place, so making sure it doesn't float away, um, but also ensures that the platform is stable, not only in regular conditions, but also in extreme rough sea states and large wind speeds. In order to test those things, to make sure that it's a stable platform, that it can survive extreme conditions and operate in the way it should in operating conditions, we need to test it in a facility like this, where we can scale down the conditions in the sea, we can scale down the size of the device and the mooring and anchoring system. Yeah, so this is a great opportunity for not only the Celtic Sea, but the UK as a whole to become global leaders in renewable energy, focusing on floating offshore wind. Offshore, just like on land, nature is all around us. The Celtic Sea covers a wide range of habitats and protected conservation areas, sustaining biodiversity and valuable ecosystems, alongside commercial activities like fishing that supports local communities. The thing is, there's an energy revolution going on here. Well, <laughs> out there really. A, a new industry is being developed, but it's not just about the wind and the waves, it's also about what's underneath the water, you know, what's at the bottom of the sea. We need to understand the shape of the seabed. We need to understand what it's made of, what its properties are, if we're going to develop this environment in a, an efficient and sustainable way. So understanding the formation and evolution of the Celtic Sea Seafloor is really important and it's like a giant jigsaw puzzle and to solve that puzzle we need to really have an understanding of the seafloor but also what's underneath that seafloor as well. Yeah, the Celtic Sea spans from just south of St George's Channel to the Bristol Channel, out to the Isles of Scilly and then out to the continental shelf edge. The, the central part of the Celtic Sea is actually quite flat and relatively shallow. We're looking at about 90 to 100 metres water depth. And then as we get out to the shelf edge, the water depth starts to deepen. We're seeing water depths over 200 metres. Just to the west of the Isles of Scilly, we have Hagefrath, this big rocky outcrop. And we also see mega ridges. We know an ice sheet extended across the shelf edge in past history. What we've done is we've come to this amazing location on the beach where we can see uh, rocks and sediments that have got a very similar composition to what's present off in the Celtic Sea where the offshore wind facilities will be built. Yeah, so the rocks that are sticking up through the beach here, these are really hard old Devonian rocks that include slates and sandstones. But on top of them, we've got this thin veneer of um, shelly gravel in this case. And often it looks like it's uh, just a continual sheet uh, of uh, gravel and, and sand. And we can see here really nicely that locally, that's very, very thin. And underneath it, you've got these rocks with very, very different properties. So what does this mean for us as a local community with a vested interest? Renewable energy isn't simply a choice. It's a necessity for our continued existence on the planet. 
You know, the development of floating offshore wind farms must take account of this, this precious environment. Out of sight mustn't mean out of mind. Knowing the geology of the seabed will help us understand environmental sensitivities and ecological impacts. Vital knowledge that will be built into development plans. Here in the southwest, geology is at the heart of the past, but it's also at the heart of its future. We feel connected to the earth, to the, to the rocks beneath our feet, but the geology doesn't stop at the shore, it extends, extends off there. We need to understand and learn and care about the offshore the same way that we do about the land. So it's a journey, it's a journey to the bottom of the Celtic Sea. A journey that's been several hundred million years in the making, but one that over the next few decades will be so exciting to be part of. With the perfect combination of resources, environment and expertise, the Celtic Sea is set to be at the leading edge of the development of new floating offshore wind and a real opportunity for us to be the global leaders in this new technology.